Hi, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars. And this very large telescope next to me is the Orion 16, the XX16G. It's a full 16 inch Dobsonian reflector on a full go to base. Now, we're really excited about this telescope because it's got a lot of unique features, uh, uh, especially for the price. So, not, uh, there's really no other telescope on the market with this set of features uh, that's this affordable. And we're going to go through some of those features. But just briefly, it's a truss tube Dobsonian, so it breaks apart into an upper and a lower cage assembly with these truss poles. So it'll fit into a small car. But not only the telescope tube, the base as well, breaks apart into four sections. The side panels, the front brace, and the bottom base, all uh, using captive hardware. So you don't have to worry about uh, losing the screws in the grass, and you don't need any tools either. It's all hand knobs. So you can fit this very large telescope into a, a very small car. Now, a 16-inch will show you a lot of detail in the sky. It's, like I said, our biggest. Uh, it pulls in 30% more light than a 14-inch, two and a half times more than a 10-inch, and four times more light than an 8-inch. So you're seeing very faint nebula, galaxies in very good detail. Uh, not only that, moon and planets come out excellent. The rings of Saturn, the cloud belts of Jupiter, very, very high resolution for a telescope of this size. All right, so let's uh, get into it some more and talk about some of those features. One of the best features of this telescope is the truss system. Now, this is a full eight pole trusses. You see uh, two stalks on each side, totaling eight. Uh, if you look at some of the telescopes on the market that use either poles or, or trusses, they're either three or four pole systems. That's not nearly as good. It's, it's not as stable. This is a true eight pole truss, so they're very rigid uh, metal trusses. When you assemble it, it goes right back to the same collimation, the same alignment, so you don't have to realign every time you take it apart and put it back together. Sure, you might have to realign it when you drive over some dirt roads, but putting the trusses back on will bring it right back to the same position it was before. So the trusses have eight screws on the bottom, four on top, and the entire system really can be assembled in eight to nine minutes uh, with no tools necessary. That's the tube. Now the base operates the same way. Uh, it's, it's again unique on the marketplace in that uh, we've fully engineered it to be broken down into four pieces. The, the side panels, the front brace, and the bottom base all come apart with these captive screws. So again, you're not losing them in the grass and you don't need any tools to put them together. The base comes with some uh, uh, nice features included. A, an accessory tray, it holds three inch and a quarter eyepieces and a two inch eyepiece. On the sides, you've got handles, the go-to controller fits in this uh, little cradle. And on the side of the motors, this is the, this is the tension adjustment for the altitude movement. So even though this is a full go-to system, you can loosen this and move the scope around manually, up and down. And over here on the bottom is an adjustment for the left and right motion, the azimuth. So even though it's full go-to, you can use this as a standard Dobsonian and move it around by hand. So I want to talk a little bit about the optics and the optical accessories that it comes with. Uh, first of all, uh, like I mentioned, it's a 16-inch mirror. So down on the bottom, you have a 16-inch parabolic concave mirror sucking in the light. Again, uh, two and a half times more light than a 10-inch and four times more light than an 8-inch. Next, the light comes back up to a secondary mirror here. It's a flat mirror at a 45-degree angle. So it bends the light out to the eyepiece comes up to this focuser here. It's a dual speed focuser with a reduction gear. So you have coarse and fine focus right here. And then it brings it right to the eyepiece. And this telescope comes with two eyepieces. You get a low power two inch eyepiece and a higher magnification inch and a quarter eyepiece with a crosshair in the middle. So you can use it to uh, do the computer alignment and get the stars exactly in the center. So the, the go-to alignment is very accurate. On the side, it comes with an easy finder, which is a uh, zero power reflex side. It's a red dot finder. So when you look through it, you can keep both eyes open and you see a little red dot floating in the sky. Just place the dot on the alignment star or 
whatever object you want to look at, and you're guaranteed to have the object in the field of view of your eyepiece. All right, so the main reason we call this the XX16G is the G part. It's a full go-to system. It has a hand controller here with over 40,000 objects in the database. So you punch in what you want to see, you hit enter, it will go to the object, find it, center it, and then continue to track on it as it moves through the sky. So unlike a normal dog where you have to manually move it to track along, this thing robotically locates and tracks. Now not only that, but what makes this very unique in the marketplace is the fact that it features a closed loop system on the uh, motors. What does that mean? In a uh, normal go-to telescope, most of them on the market, if I was to move this manually after doing the two-star alignment, let's say I just did that, well, the computer just got lost. It doesn't know I moved it. Well, in this case, the system knows I've moved it over by hand, so all I have to do is just punch in the original object in the controller and it will move back to where it originally was. So that could be handy for several reasons. Uh, let's say I wanted to look at some object over here and I didn't want to bother with the controller. I knew exactly where it was. Uh, I just move the telescope manually there and then when I'm done, just press the next object in the controller and it will zoom to it and it'll be right in the center of the view. Also, if you know you wanted to salute to some object way over here on the other side of the sky, well, the computer, it, it takes a minute to, to move over there. I can manually move this thing by hand all the way over till I'm close, but then I don't know exactly where it is, so I punch in the object into the controller and it will take me the rest of the way right to the object. So very handy way to uh, uh, work both manual and go-to all in the same telescope. Also, since I can move this manually, we designed in some tension adjustments. This is the altitude adjustment, the altitude tension adjustment for up and down, and there's a azimuth left and right adjustment down in the bottom. So I can tune in the amount of tension I want for up and down. Right now that's a little tight, so I'll loosen it up a little bit right there. Up and down, left and right, very smooth motions by hand. So again, you can tune in exactly what you need for smooth motions manually. I hear this question a lot from people that are seeing a truss tube telescope for the first time. Well, why are there these holes here? I can see right through it. Isn't that going to affect the view? Well, actually not. I mean, the light comes straight down from the top, hits the mirror back up to your eye. The only time this would affect you is if you have a neighbor with a light that comes down at an angle. Let's say there's a street light over here and it comes down at an angle and it enters the telescope from, from this angle, hits the mirror, light bounces around inside and lowers your contrast. Well, how do you get rid of that? Well, it's a truss suit tube, so there, by definition, are going to be these holes. Well, we have a solution. We have a shroud that's basically like a large sock. It fits over the top, encloses this inside, so you now don't have any light leak from the uh, ambient light around you. All right, well, here we have the shroud uh, fully installed on the telescope. It completely blocks out any extraneous uh, light from entering if you're uh, viewing from an urban location with uh, neighbors with street lights or, or uh, security lights. So a nice handy accessory to have uh, if you are not in the darkest of locations. All right, well, there you have it. We have taken a closer look at all the features that make this the XX16G. Uh, we've tried to design several things into one telescope, a very large mirror for pulling in a lot of light, a full go-to system to robotically find, center, and then continue to track the object, and all in a package that can come apart into smaller pieces to fit in even the smallest of cars. So if you're looking for all of those features in one telescope, I think the XX16G might be the scope for you. Thank you very much. Clear skies.